Hello. Firstly, two things, actually three. I'm not 22, I'm 25. I started teaching at 22, but end of PhD at 22, too weird. I'm already a weirdo, so Arnaud, 25. <laughs> Firstly, I want to apologize for my French accent, but you know I'm a product of the French educational system and we're internationally well known for that. So sorry in advance. And secondly, I will have no slides, not because I didn't want to prepare some, but because my topic is way too painful for images, actually. So Syria, was it worth it? This question, I know you heard it a lot. I know you thought about it at some point. Even if you've never heard of Syria before, even if you're not that interested, even if you don't study politics or don't follow the news, Syria, was it worth it? Almost half a million of dead people. Hundreds of thousands of disappeared people. Millions of displaced and refugees. I don't want to talk a lot about the numbers because this is what you hear a lot. This is what you hear and this is why this question always comes back. Syria, was it really worth it? So I want to give you a reply maybe to this question tonight. Maybe one reply, maybe one answer. My answer and the answer of a lot of Syrians. Because I'm, I'm Syrian myself. Today I'm not going to talk as a French. I'm also French. I'm going to talk as a Syrian. Syrian from Homs and Hama, two martyr cities. A Syrian who also lost a lot of people, so it's not because I'm here now that it's easier for me because I didn't lose anyone. I lost 30 people of my family already, some of them under torture. I lost one cousin killed by Daesh, by ISIS, in his own home while he was sleeping. He was a rescuer. So Syria, was it worth it, really? People who, you know, saw other nations, other countries being free, neighboring countries asking for their freedoms, they tried. Then, yeah, they went on protests, it was peaceful at the beginning, blah, 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 you know, and then it became a civil war. Was it really worth it? Well, maybe a Syrian who died, or a Syrian who was in prison, or a Syrian who is displaced right now, or a Syrian who is in this room, and some of them are here, can talk to you and convey to you anything, even when they're here, because of the language, maybe. Thank God, I can talk. So I will try to tell you about our story. Was it really worth it? Why not just living, you know, giving up on freedoms, freedom of speech, free human rights, giving up? Why not just staying like that, but staying alive? Well, you people, I think you haven't tried not having this basic freedom, the freedom of speaking. I think you haven't tried not having it in your life. I hope you haven't. I hope you'll never try. Of course, when I was in Syria, I lived for a while in Syria. Of course, I, I was like, I didn't have it entirely. But you know, it was temporary, so it's fine. But there is something worse, actually. Something that I think makes my answer maybe interesting, I'd say. I tried losing any not even freedom, any possibility of speaking freely for myself. Because I had cancer myself, tongue cancer. Exactly, actually this is funny and sad. The exact same week the Syrian revolution started, my tongue was cut for the second time. So, several times I completely lost the ability to speak. As you can maybe see, I love speaking. <laughs> I completely lost it. It's not like this is the only thing that I went through, even physically, because I, I always think of torture, you know. This is what I have in mind when I think, was it worth it? Because torture, it's, I think it's the worst thing. Maybe we can agree on that. It's the worst thing that can happen. Maybe worse than death, I don't know. So I, I was disabled myself because of cancer, because of the surgeries I had. I was a corpse, honestly, I'm not exaggerating, unfortunately. I could only move my fingers. Even morphine, I didn't take it that well. I could feel only pain from head to toe. I could feel only pain. But I swear, I'm not gonna, you know, enumerate my medical file because you know what, it would take one hour. <laughs> but you know what, take everything. I, I even lost my hearing twice also. 
take everything, not being able to move, being in pain all the time, everything, not being able to, to stand, not being able to be independent, depending on people for anything, not being able to lift a glass of water, take everything, I swear to you, not being able to speak for yourself is worse. Because when you lose, when you lose this, when you lose this ability to just speak for yourself, just be able to say, like, no, stop. I don't want to take that. I don't want to take this man. I, I'm not going to do that. Please go. Please leave my room right now. You can't even say that. You can't even say, I want to go to the bathroom right now. You can't say anything. I, I, actually, I couldn't even eat or drink. So those things are basic things in life. I was hungry. I was really very hungry for days and days and days. I was very thirsty. I couldn't swallow anything. But still, not being able to speak is worse. Because when you lose this, I don't know, I, I can't really explain it to you. I hope you'll never be able to try yourself. I hope you'll never, be, I hope you'll never go through that, really. But you're, you're nothing anymore. You're nothing. People, they don't even look at you anymore. They don't consider you anymore. You're nothing. You're just a part of, of the wall when you can speak for yourself. So was it worth it still? Okay, it's horrible, blah, blah, blah. Freedom, human rights, of course, idealistically, it's worth it. But so many, de like, so many dead people, so costly, so painful. Well, there is something really important that you have to know. When you're in that situation, it's not like you have a choice. And when I really, like, what fascinates me with this question that I always hear myself in my work, at Sciences Po, from my students, all the time, was it really worth it? I want to answer, I mean, ask this if, you could ask this if this was a choice. So to, to let you know, and then you can judge for yourself about was it a choice or not. Firstly, talking about Syrians, you have to know when you don't have the basic freedom of speaking, it's not only that you can't, like, I don't know, go and criticize the president on TV. We're not even dreaming of that. When you don't have this basic freedom, well, you can denounce a husband who beats you. You can, everything is corrupt, and you're, you're, you're speaking, what you say, your words are amount to nothing. No one wants to hear you. A child has no rights in Syria. A woman has no rights in Syria. Everyone can humiliate you if they're from the system, you can't say anything. They can beat you, beat you to death sometimes, you can't say anything. So if I had to take one example, and this one example is actually why this whole revolution, such a costly movement, it's so costly, now it's really a war, it's a mess right now, it's chaos. Why it started, I, I guess you know why, but still, imagine yourself, you're in Syria, you're in a country, it's corrupt, you have no freedoms, you're you, you will stay at a certain level all your life because if you don't want to accept being corrupt, you're not going to evolve any way or the other. Anyway, it can only, only go worse. But you're, you're just, you just don't say anything. You just shut up. I'm sorry, I'm vulgar, but like, I, uh, I value words so much. I, I'm like, I think I have the right to. So when I need to say a vulgar word, I say it. <laughs> so yeah, your only right is to shut up and you're like, okay. It's too dangerous, I'm gonna shut up. And then kids, kids like from five to 16, they did the, the mistake of writing things on walls and on, on desks in their schools. So they're taken, they're tortured. So your, your own kid is tortured and you're supposed to, to never say anything about it. So that, that's, what, that's when people were like, who cares, I'm just gonna protest because I want my kid back. And they were shot and you know the rest of the story. This is not where I want to go. So is it really a choice? Yes, yeah, it's, it's painful. I know, it's horrible. I, I've lost so many people myself. It's, it's horrible. I can't tell you how much it's horrible. But you know, when you, when you just want to have just basic dignity, when you just want to just be a human being, you, you're not asking for anything big. You're not asking for, you're not asking, working for big dreams even. You just want to have your humanity because when you lose, I, I felt when I lost my own capacity to speak, I felt I was not a human anymore. This was the worst thing ever. So when you're confronted with that, it's not like, to me, asking Syrians, was it really worth it? It's like asking me, 
is it really, was it really worth it going through treatment? Because actually, I'm in pain all the time. Pain never went away. I have a lot of complications. Now I'm talking to you, I'm in horrible pain. I'm in pain in my tongue, in my eyes, in my ears, the left one especially, in my neck where I have a huge scar, and other places. I'm in pain all the, all the time. But you, I don't know, I don't think anyone would ask me, was it really worth it trying to cure your tongue? You know, you could just have given up and never talk again. You know, it, it's, maybe it would have been easier. This is, this is not a choice. This is not a choice for us. It did go in ways we didn't want to. But that's, that's not like, it's when you do, when you refuse to live like in a, in a life that's worse than being an animal in a zoo because you, the animal doesn't really care about not being able to speak, but you care. So when you refuse that, the moment you refuse it and you just want to be human, no, I don't see how anyone can ask you, is it worth it? I mean, what happens next is because this world is crazy. People are corrupt, people are bad. And you know, yeah, it's really painful. This is getting really long. But that's because when you let go of something, it's so hard to take it back. As the previous speaker was saying, you let go of the girl, well now, run to find her again. So, when you let go of very important things as human rights, and this is what happened in Syria, people were aware that, we were aware that we were being taken our rights, but we were silent because it's, it was way too dangerous. So when things go bad, things can go bad in one second because chaos is so easy. Destroying is so easy. You know, messing up your room is so easy. Cleaning up after it takes more time. So can you imagine with a whole country, you let all the rights go away? Well, yeah, it does take time. On my, just my own example, it was so easy losing my health. It happened in a few weeks, in a few months, and I, I was nothing. I was, I was nothing. I wasn't, I was, honestly, I was a corpse. I was disgusting. It's so hard to, to gain it back. It's so hard. It takes so much work. Hospitals, appointments, surgeries. I, I can't even tell you how long it is, just for one person. So can you imagine the scale of a whole country? We, we lost so much gaining it back. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, it's costly, yes. But it's because people like Syrians nowadays, people like them here in Europe did that a hundred or two hundred years ago that me and you can be here right now. And I think it's worth it that as a Syrian, as the daughter of Syrians, I have a safe place to talk. I have a place where I can be a teacher of political science in Sciences Po Paris at 22 years old. I think it's worth it, yeah. So yes, it's costly. Yes, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. But asking was it worth it, well, it wasn't a choice. It wasn't a choice. So today, when you hear all that, just know that a lot of young Syrians who even died wrote even in their will, the days where I was finally free were the best days of my life. The days when I, can, when I could talk again, were the best days of my life. I don't care about being in pain. I'm talking, I'm free, I'm here with you. Yes, I'm in pain. Yes, I'm going through hell every day, I swear. Yes, as Syrians, we, we, it's so hard. It's so hard, but we don't want to stay living like l less than nothing. We want to be just, we want to be human beings. We want to be like everyone else. We want to be like you. This is what Syrians are. So when you please, if you can go home from, with one thing from my talk, when you hear, was it worth it? When you hear of all those numbers, the dead people, the injured, the displaced, the refugees, don't think that this was a revolution for death. Don't think that this was for destruction, that this is a war. Yes, it became a war. But Syrian people, when we, the international community, managed to have a ceasefire, they went on protests again just a few weeks ago because they're still in it. They still want it. They haven't given up. This is what they want. And they're saying, they say, we won't give up. We want freedoms. We want democracy. It's still worth it for them. So please don't think that we did all that because we don't care about dying. 
because, I don't know, no, no. This wasn't a revolution for death. This was a revolution for life, for a good life, for life with dignity, for a human life, a real human life. This is what we want. And yes, no matter how, the, how much costly it is, I can tell you, and many Syrians behind me, some of them here even, I swear, in Syria, outside of Syria, we human rights activists, we people who believe in freedom, in human dignity, in human rights, in democracy, in civil society, we people who believe in the future, we believe in human beings, we believe in humanity, we believe in life, but the real life, the good life, not life as, as less than nothing. We will never stop trying. We will never stop trying. I will never stop trying to defend human rights in Syria and elsewhere. I will never give up, no matter how costly that is. I will never give up supporting the Syrian, Syrian people and anyone asking for their freedoms. So remember, this was a revolution for life. And yes, life, as you all know, life is hard sometimes. You all here have goals, you all here dream. You all here work hard, you wake up early, sometimes it's hard. So yeah, you would all agree with me. You all have your struggles. I know it, you would agree with me. Life is hard sometimes. I know it well, you know it well. But even when it's hard, life is always worth it. And this is what we're doing in Syria. I hope you'll remember it. Thank you so much for listening to me.